Okay, I'll give them just like one more minute. Then we'll go ahead and get started. Turn the phone on silent. Okay, so may end up being just us. So I wanted to go ahead and continue with our um, self empowerment series. So I'm going to be reading out of the book. Did you want to um, unmute yourself? You can talk to me. That's fine. Or if you want to type, however you want to do it. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Oh, hello. <laughs> yep, we're all here. Yay. So, are you on iPhone or is that somebody else? I wonder. Nope, I'm Lynn. Okay. We'll have the third party then. That's okay. Cool. Okay. So, let me see. Where were we at? So last week we did lessons in letting go. <laughs> okay. The alchemical path of expressing the shadow self. Or is this okay with you or or do you want to talk about some other subject or what would you like it's totally up to you <laughs> that's fine okay we'll do this one then okay the alchemical path of expressing the shadow self life can seem like a black hole trying to suck you in you feel exhausted defeated and unable to fight through another day you want to crawl back into bed and forget about the world that is demanding something from you. We get it, babe. Things can seem really bad, and you don't see how you can make it any better. Many of you can relate to those moments of feeling cloudy, cloudy and unbalanced. We all find ourselves feeling out of sync with life and completely deaf to the wisdom of our inner voice. Slipping out of awareness and balance is something that society has programmed us to do oh so well. Put your nose to the grindstone. Get to work. Be seen, not heard. Shut up and don't ask questions. Never cause a rift. Be normal. Do as you're told. Work and then die. On and on goes a fierce pursuit 
to distance our spirit from our waking life. No wonder most of us walk around unhealthy, unhappy, and confused. This is not some kind of blame game or a declaration of martyrdom. We are speaking from personal experience and the countless stories of so many people. But this status quo can be changed when you decide to face your fears and take back your power. Give yourself a big hug and kiss. Throw a little tantrum on the floor. Break something if you need to. Call into work. Cancel your plans. Cry your eyes out. Eat a big vat of ice cream. Own your darkness. Cultivating personal awareness through self-care is an essential component for happiness. Whether you are a spiritual person or just someone who aspires to live healthy and whole, it is important to consider your relationship with yourself. At the core of all personal growth is the need for right relationship. Um, then it, goes, it talks about the author describes how he navigates through this terrain. He says, I am always in self-exploration mode trying to understand what gifts are hidden deep within my soul, my shadow, and under all the baggage that exists from daily living. There are, there are always series of ups and downs. Learning to navigate them can be tricky. It can be tricky business. No one has it all figured out, but openness and curiosity are key. Sadly, we have created a society that does not uphold deep, personal exploration and introspection. Rather than look for the root of the disease or dis-ease, we want a quick fix or worse to just ignore the pain that is festering. Eventually the wounds become too painful to ignore and we look for relief. And then he um, shares another life story. Hold on, I drink my coffee. He says, as an intuitive, I have witnessed many profound tales of pain and healing. Some of them are my own experiences, but others are from the many people I have worked with. What I have found is this deep longing for wholeness and wellness, but wholeness only comes when we shine a light on the pain, move into it, and desire to make changes. People want relief and release from cycles of hell and troubled times they are faced with. Looking out at the world, the fear and pain can be uh, debilitating, but the process of healing begins within, and we must learn to venerate the shadow parts of ourselves because that is where the true work starts. Let's step out of the magical thinking complex where we cover our wounds with crystals, prayers, and lots of positive affirmations. We need to start at the foundation, the rich, fertile soil of our shadow. Um, tools are valuable. You're going to learn all about tools and techniques to create change in your life. But these are just the avenues for going in. The tool is the key and the wound is the entry point. Ceremony, energy work, and self-exploration are cornerstones for your personal practice. The process of healing and building a more congruent self is an ongoing and intentional step in the right direction. Our practice helps us actively participate in our recovery. But the real secret to spiritual cleansing, clearing, and healing is having a dialogue with the self. To begin the deep work of cultivating right relationship with yourself, you have to face your shadow. To create long-lasting shifts and changes in your spirit, your mental, emotional state, and your life, you have to be willing to stop, get still, and listen to what is happening inside. Without acknowledging the wounds that make up your shadow, spiritual tools become nothing more than band-aids. We've grown discontent with this approach in the spiritual community because it doesn't create lasting change. If you sew up the superficial damage without removing the shrapnel, 
Eventually, it festers back to the surface, and it's usually not very pretty. Now, there is benefit to the short-term relief because it gives you a glimpse of clarity and hope. But you want to heal and fortify yourself so that you can move from feeling powerless to powerful. I've done so many videos, my voice is so dry. I'm going to send you guys a um, file too with the videos that I have done. I still have five more to go, but I'll send you that file with the links of what I've got so far. Okay. Exercises such as visualizations, rituals, journaling questions, and prompts can help with the process. They provide a gentle push to explore who you are what is happening in your head and heart, and why. You have to pull out the roots or the weed will return. Begin by holding space for yourself, a safe environment to be open, vulnerable, and completely naked with everything you feel and have experienced. You don't have to hide your pain anymore. Your wounds are what make you strong. Your pain helps you clarify your purpose. Isolation and loneliness can breed victim mentality and keep you in these limiting cycles. So how do you battle the long, dark shadow when it comes around? Stop fighting. That's the first step. When you are in the dark about something completely confused or feeling sad, look at, look at it as a gift of insight, not your enemy. These dark, off-kilter moments are your spirit's way of saying, hey, You've disconnected from your goodness and grace. You can come back now. Like a fish out of water, you begin to feel every fiber of your being shrivel up with deprivation, starving from a lack of love. You find yourself ravenous for spiritual and emotional sustenance. This is because our natural state is to be in grace, in the moment, in fluidity, not in this dense, dark, disconnected, and rigid reality we have claimed as the truth. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> wow, sorry. Let me see. Let's put another section here. <clears throat> I've got a lot of trouble with my throat. I do apologize. Finding the Roots of Resistance Slip into that deep space inside of you that feels lost, broken, and in trauma. Breathe awareness into your body, your head, and your heart. Allow yourself to feel what is happening down below in the spaces that you've locked away from the rest of the world. Whether it is out of fear, guilt, or shame, if you can be with yourself in these uncomfortable places, you can untangle the knots, release the resistance, and set the hungry ghost of your shadow free. When you are seeking to change your circumstance, look deeper and see what is feeding it. With simple practices, we can find momentary relief from some of the heaviness and pain. But if you are unmeshed in a limiting situation, then the only real solution is to work your way out of it. Taking time to get really deep, begin asking why. Once you befriend your shadow parts, your pain, you will find yourself dancing in the dark. You move into the sacred communion with your light and your shadow, born of rhythm and fluidity. The shadow is not bad, rather it is the rejection of the shadow that causes pain. You might need some time to make this happen. Be gentle with yourself and work on having compassion. Shame, fear, and guilt are never good for inspiring healing. We might need to work on the superficial for a bit until we can crack that exterior and go inward to where the juicy power lives. Invite yourself to cultivate right relationship for yourself by holding space. Make the room to listen quietly without reacting to what you are really feeling. Ask yourself, what is motivating my fear instead of what am I afraid of? Ask yourself, what is causing my pain instead of what hurts? 
When something feels bad, then let it feel bad. Don't talk yourself out of it, and don't guilt yourself for not feeling like sunshine, rainbows, and a big cloud of glitter. It's okay. You can't lie to yourself about how you feel. Take some time to express to your shadow all that you feel. Be open, honest, and candid with your shadow. Express your deepest sensations of pain, discomfort, and even resentment. What do you feel about your shadow? What has she done to you? Where have you felt held back in life? What have you missed out on? Why and how do you feel small in your life? Openly express this to your shadow self. Really reach out to your shadow with bravery and curiosity. Accept that she is here reminding you to go deeper, love harder, and flow more gracefully. Gently ask her, why are you here? Listen for her answer. Take some time and meditate around these questions. Can you remember a time when you acted out and were punished? How were feelings handled in your family? Were you encouraged to express them freely or were you told that certain emotions were not nice? Can you recall a time when you were shut down for expressing your needs? How did that feel? Were your parents affectionate or not? What did it feel like when you experienced disapproval from an authority figure? How about when you experienced approval? What emotions were considered bad in your family? Which emotions were considered good? How do you express anger, fear, depression, or other so-called negative emotions today? What does your shadow tell you? Why have you been afraid or angry or lonely? Ask your shadow how she has grown so big. Ask your shadow how you can help her heal. Um, I kind of probably went too fast, but they're saying journal your answers and notice what you feel. Be gentle with yourself. Then look again with new softer eyes and ask yourself, why have I neglected my shadow? This process could take on any form. You can imagine your shadow as a figure sitting next to you. The shadow could even pull up a chair in front of you for a one-on-one -on -one verbal conversation. Just let out how you feel in response to your shadow and she will listen. Write letters or journal, finger paint with your shadow or collage or dance. And as your shadow listens to you, you must listen to her. When you're done getting out of the angst, take a deep breath, put on something that feels sexy. And remember this, you are fucking powerful. You are really powerful, more powerful than you know. You are a walking, mystical being filled with so much light and magic that you could blow the roof off the world. So don't shy away from your darkness and never shy away from your light. <clears throat> Let's validate something for you. Things can be difficult. Life throws some big curveballs at you, but you choose how you engage with the drama. All of the negative, heavy, dark things you're going to experience are very real, and it is all part of the excavation process to uncover your innate magic. Just a little bit more. Okay, be brave and boldly expressive. You might not believe you're a badass, powerful light beam, but know that you really are. You are truly beautiful, vibrant, and fully capable of living bravely in your own power. You have begun a sacred healing process. Your shadow work will re-knit the fragments and lost parts of yourself. This is not something you accomplish and that's it. 
It's a lifelong journey. Life is a dance between the light and the shadow, and it is the contrast that creates the whole of ex whole, not whole like a ground, but whole, like complete of existence. Go into the world and express yourself. The shadow is born from a lack of love and welcoming for all of your parts, the perceived good and bad. As you communicate with your shadow, you will find that she is nothing more than the beautiful parts of you that want to be seen and heard. She wants to be real in the world. Live life as art. How can your life be a form of sacred expression? Here's a little secret. Your life is always sacred expression. You are a cre creative force by nature. You just have to get on board with the universe. To get on board, just ask yourself, what holds me back? What am I afraid of? What seems like a big risk? What entices me with excitement and a bit of trepidation? I have never blank because I fear blank success, failure, ridicule, etc. What feeds your spirit? What makes your heart sing? What gives you joy? What do you close your eyes and dream of doing if everything were perfect? I feel so light and alive when I blank. You guys fill in the blanks. Declare a radical gesture of self-expression. Go out into the world today and pick something that feels a little dangerous but makes your heart sing. Choose something that is completely out of your comfort zone, outside, outside of the walls of what is expected, yet makes you smile inside when you dream of it. Now go do it. This can be a small or large gesture. It could be ordering a fattening drink at the coffee shop rather than a healthy one. It could be wearing red lipstick to work when you usually don't put on makeup. It could be saying no to your boss, friend, partner, even if it means disappointing them. Whatever you do, do it for you. You are taking your first steps into creative and spiritual living. The path to healing is the path of self-expression and being in communication with the creative unknown. This is a shamanic journey, a path of alchemical transformation. You choose how you are going to respond, react, and engage with every single thing in your life. Don't forget to have boundaries. Boundaries are essential for embracing the shadow, clearing out the mental chatter, and digging into your truth. Start by saying no when you mean no, and yes, when you mean yes. Use your voice, it's the most powerful thing you can do. No one knows how you feel, what you need or want, or what they should do for you if you don't tell them. Communicate your boundaries loud and clear. Whatever opposes your personal truth and well being is not something you need to give space to in your life. When you feel dark, when you feel angry, when you feel defeated, Use your voice. Scream a little, then speak your truth. Don't shy away from what you want, need, or feel. Those are the most important things in your life. Everything else is just filling in the space. You've got to be a little unconventional to survive. You've got to be audacious enough to show your truth and thrive. Always bring yourself back to center and link in with what you feel. Knowing what hurts shows you how to pivot, and knowing what feels nourishing in your core allows you to stay in the flow. With each step you, step you take, whether backward or forward, always rock out to this sacred mantra. I am a spark of the divine light, magically creating a life of living beauty, color, and sacred expression. And that's it for the discussion. What did you guys think? Do y'all want to talk about that?
Hey, Lena, it's Ashley. Hi, Ashley. How are you doing? What did you think about the discussion? I really agree with that. I feel like when we're sad and we get caught up in what someone says or does to us or the disappointment and failure, right? Mm -hmm. That it feeds the shadow to come. And it's either the shadow that's within us, the dream that exists that we dance with all the time, or it attracts, you know, negative things that are out in the inner space of time and sand and they come to us and it just enhances that shadow energy instead of really taking that time to understand coming unreactive so i thought it was really interesting i missed the first five or seven minutes <laughs> so i oh. apologize so I, I missed the first part so in fact i look forward to going back and listening again okay yeah i'm gonna um i'm recording this so i can upload it to youtube and i will also share it on facebook page too but yeah awesome. I, agree, I agree with what you're saying if you hold it inside and don't express how you feel it's gonna fester up and it's gonna be like a boil on your butt <laughs> well yeah and then also too that pain breeds and instead of pivoting to understand that it's there to show you, like those uncomfortable feelings are there to show you how to pivot, right? It's there to show you the contrast of what you need to ask for instead. And instead of venting or affirming what you don't want, then ask for what you do want and you're the creator of that. Nobody else is going to for you. You have to create that and it starts with your way of being, which starts with your feelings. Right. Sorry, I'm outside okay. near the beach. Sorry. No worries. So, yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool. It's actually really nice. Thank you. Um, did did any did you get any? How do, I'm so I can't even speak. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys got something out of it. Did y'all get anything out of it? What did you? You know, how did it make you feel or, or did you learn anything or was it something you already knew? You know, all those kind of questions. That's what I'm trying to get out. Yeah, I felt like it was perfect timing. It's Ashley again. I mean, you and I had that late night chat last night and, you know, the kind of topic of the theme was being projected upon by someone else and someone else's suffering and how that really created that feeling within that, you know, made me for a second question everything instead of just seeing wow that person's shadow and that person's hurt that's them right that's that's their expression and they are still so blocked in their journey that they don't even realize compassionately what's going on and of course it hurt me and I was able to sit there in that moment and kind of take a step back but then when you and I were talking about it it was more or less venting and after our call I really sat with it and I was like I'm going to journal about this, what's really standing out to me? Like what's congruent? How do I kick this around so that three days later, I'm not having this conversation about the, she said, she said, he said, he said, you know, how can I really learn what my shadow is saying to me? And more than anything, if there is something in my way of being that needs an upgrade, well then let's ask everybody, right? Right. What isn't working? What do you think I could do better? And instead of focusing on, wow, this dysfunctional thing that I do isn't getting me where I want to be, how can I do it better? What do I need to do instead? Because that way of being and that feeling will bring me what I want, right? Even if it's not what I think it is, it will bring me my highest because I'm showing a willingness to participate and let go of my ego. Right. You're getting it out. You're not letting it sit mm -hmm. in and mess her up. Turning exactly. But it's into a positive. Yeah. Exactly. Totally. Wow, that's really nice. Was, um, is that Kim? I, I think your name, is it Kim? I was thinking her name was Kim. Quiet Storm. <laughs> there okay. you go. Hi, how are you? I just muted it because I feel like I'm in a wind tunnel. Sorry. No worries. How are you doing? Um, I'm doing okay. Um, I agree a lot with what you said. I think for me, um, my takeaway is 
I think I take a lot from people. People will say things. And while I'm an outspoken person, it just seems like when it comes to people that are close to me, that I don't want to push back. I don't want to disrupt the norm. Um, you know, I'll accept, for example, what my family give me, what my kids give me. Um, but like I said, I won't push back. I won't holler. I won't say anything. It's, I take it and keep moving. So while I clearly have a voice, just making myself speak up um, more often for myself. Right. So you just kind of bury how you, your, your true feelings? I do. To um, protect them, so to speak, or because it's not... I think... I don't want to disrupt. I don't want anybody to be upset per se. Um, you know, I'm fiercely protective over my family, but I won't protect myself the way I protect my family. Right. So you just kind of like take it all in and, and it doesn't matter how you feel as long as they're okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'll suffer in silence as long as, they're okay yeah I but what do you do for that. yourself i suffer i guess i just suffer that's not good though you do need to get it out maybe you can um what do they call it cognitive intervention think about what you're going to say and make sure you say it to where it doesn't sound offensive you know what i mean mm -hmm. you know what i do sometimes i'm sorry to, to butt in uh, okay. Quite so much. I've been there where you, where I, I kind of feel where you, I've been there. Um, and I'm a very quiet, quiet person, and I tend to get walked on all the time, and I suck it in because I'm not one that yells and screams. I'm a thinker. So, what I do is I love painting, but I love painting walls. <laughs> I'm not an artist. <laughs> it, as you're painting, you'd be surprised you're not realizing that you're painting and you're thinking. And sometimes when you're thinking of the, the situation, you kind of say what you would have said or wanted to say. And it makes you stronger inside that when it does come in that situation, you could say it and it just, it just falls out because you've practiced already. Right. If that makes sense. It does. Or even if you don't want to say it directly to them, you know, you kind of suck it up and just do what they say. And even though it might, for lack of a better word, piss you off because you really don't want mm -hmm. to do it. Like she said, painting or journaling, just write them a letter and tell them exactly what you feel. And what I tell um, some people, and Ashley knows this, is write down exactly how you feel so that you get it out. But instead of rocking the boat, take the paper outside and burn it. And, and let spirit take your message for you. It's incredibly effective and it 100% works. And you can really take that time to frame your communication mm -hmm. from a victim standpoint of they did this to me and you really flip the script on you own how you didn't stand up for yourself and how you're informing someone else to treat you, right? When we agree right. with someone else's projection of us or perception of us and that's right. not the way that we wanna be, and we're leeching energy or we're allowing them to take energy from us, we have to step back and really look at that. So if your speech is all me, 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 you did this to me, you did this to me, this, you did this to me, really take a step back and own responsibility. Own what you can, right? I allowed this to happen. That reclaims your power, right? And then you can say, I don't wanna treat me this way. I don't allow this. So the next time it happens, instead of getting mad, just stay quiet and just say, you know, respectfully, either retreat and take space or respectfully, that's not going to work for me, right? Like, mm -hmm. I don't allow people to treat me that way and I don't treat me that way. And if they're like, oh, whatever, I don't know where you've heard this, whatever, it can continue. Just say politely, I think we need to take a pause. And you have to extricate yourself from that situation. It's the most power that you're going to ever execute in that way. But it's building right. a muscle. Okay. Makes okay. sense. Makes really good sense. 
as long as you're getting it out, that's the main thing. You have to get your frustrations out. Don't leave them bottled up inside because it'll eat away at you like a cancer. And it comes back out at the wrong time. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And then you're, you're mad at somebody else and you take it out on your kids. And then next thing you know, on Saturday comes around, you got to go to confession because you treated your kids like shit. And he's going to take you out every week. I know my penance is, oh, you got to take your kids out to eat every month. You, as long as you go spend time with them by yourself because you took it out on your kids and you were mad at somebody else. So right. we, go, we go eat. <laughs> <laughs> I got off easy, to be honest, probably, but, <laughs> but so, yeah, I understand. You don't want, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to take it out on your, on your kids or the people closest to you. And if it's your kids or the people closest to you, that's upsetting you. Tell them off, but tell them off in a letter so that you're still releasing it. Okay. Or, you know what I'm saying? You don't have I to do. Tell I them just off, need to get out my system. Exactly. And you can do that in many different forms. You don't have to be like, look, bitch, you're not going to do that me that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think I like this platform better because you guys can talk back to me. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I really like it. So. Okay. Any other uh, questions or thoughts about the discussion or what do you guys want to do? Yeah, you I'm kind of curious. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'm curious with the shadow, right? And mm -hmm. maybe you can elaborate your perspective or what the author that you're sharing with us is really saying. But is it ever that we fully heal our shadow? I mean, I feel like right now I'm walking in the moonlight and I totally see my shadow, right? There she is. Right. So, I mean, she's always with me, right? No matter what like as an imprint or are there ways of like really healing the shadow and embracing that darker edge well, of all of your being saying. they're saying you need to embrace it and accept yourself your whole self you know you don't you don't right. you don't you don't have to accept what other people are except yourself well i mean you know, right like people say boys don't cry Oh, they do. No, oh, they do. I tell, my son, do. I tell my son all the time, look, dude, if you don't, if, if you're sad, cry. I mean, right. our rabbit died night before last. It was my son's and he's Aww. sitting there and he's shaking, not making a noise. And I'm like, it's okay to cry. It's, yeah. You know? That's hard. It, it's not yeah. okay to not cry. It doesn't matter right. if you're a boy or a girl. It doesn't make you any less of a man i know we're all right women, but it doesn't make you any less of a man to cry and i'm using a man as right because more men are told that you have to be the man you can cry right right but well i mean like embrace your guess, shadow self embrace what people say you're not supposed to do right i totally embrace those aspects of my personality and Hopefully it's healthy ego and not unhealthy ego, right? But, you know, over the summer, I worked with a Vedic astrology individual and I got like a profile that was all of my stuff, like my strengths, sorry, I'm gonna eat, all of my strengths and then all of my not so strong moments, like the things that really are not the most attractive redeeming qualities about myself. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, then after doing it, like I was around some individuals and they caught me doing things that were not attractive. And I just kind of stopped and I owned who I was being in that moment. And I said, I realize that this is not attractive. This is going to be a process of going from this to obviously the positive and duality. But at the same time, if I minimize that this is a part of who I am at all and sugarcoat a turd and pretend like this isn't who I am, I really feel like I'm doing my a disservice because this shadow gives the light to me and my character and without it I wouldn't have gotten to where I am today because some of it caused left turns in life and some of it caused right turns in, in life but I would have never gotten a lesson had it not had reared its head so I can't 
can't be mean to it and say, oh, we're going to put it in a cage and lock it in the basement and hit it with a steel pole. Like, that's not kind to me because that's still a part of me. So that's kind of, I don't know, you tell me, am I on or off about that? Well, let me ask you, they said that it was unattractive for you to be doing what you were doing, correct? Right. And it was a part of something that we knew that was on the list. And I felt like overall, it was like a very manipulative ploy. And I just said to them, you know, look, I work with people on their behaviors constantly. So I realized this is where I am, point A. And if I want to get to point B, I'm, I'm going to have to start walking. And right now I'm clearly closer to point A, which is the unattractive way of being. If well, I'm going to get to B, I have to own A first. But if it was a part of your job, do you consider it being unattractive or do you consider it being part of your job? Right. Like sometimes, like especially like when you step into a position of leadership or sometimes when you're looking at creating something, and I think we are really hard on ourselves for this, right? We, we hear a lot of times like, oh, do self-care. We hear, oh, do self-care. Well, an element of self-care is the self. And if you're going to embellish on that word, it is to be selfish, right? And selfish has gotten a very bad rap in our society. And so, of course, that showed up on one of my traits. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to deny. It can be the me show sometimes. But at the same time, like, I need to be self-oriented because if I'm, you know, a martyr or I placate myself or I don't, even acknowledge the fact that I have a self, right? And I've been there, played that role in different careers. Nothing gets growing because you have to have a sense of self-identity or you're dead. Right. So I'm not going to play that role. And I really just said to him, I was like, you know, I can't get on and be in front of a camera if I don't have a sense of being selfish because I'm not on that camera to sit there and be like, oh, what is the other person on the end of the line going to think about me? No, I give zero Fs and no apologies in that moment. And being unapologetic is what gets the job done, right? So that, like, I don't see that as negative. Now, if I, can it be used for the negative? Oh, absolutely. But that's the thing that I was asking is, like, I feel like there are traits in the shadow that they come out when they need to come out to conceal us, protect us, help us. And I'm just interested what your take is on that. Well, I think that as long as you don't find it as being unattractive, then then it doesn't matter what they think. You know what I'm saying? It's, not, it's, it's just like someone saying that boys aren't supposed to cry. Well, that's their opinion. But that doesn't mean that it's right for that particular boy. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I feel like I say that all the time on every one of my 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 chat readings. You you are very welcome. Smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's quiet. Everybody's thinking. <laughs> That's good though. It's good that that you know, you're thinking instead of being like, she don't know what she's supposed to talk about. Yeah. No, I think you do know what you're talking about and you deal with it in a lot of people on the regular. Like you hear it when you're talking to their pain because you're talking to their shadow. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's not necessarily something that everybody wants to hear, but it is something that I feel like people need to hear and that we all need to work on. We all have different different things that we need to work on inside of ourselves. So, Do we, when you when you listen to other people um, speak in, in in their own pain and so forth, do you sometimes take some of that and reflect on yourself as well? I um I can feel it and yeah, sometimes it it hurts and I feel their sadness and you know things and it and it breaks my heart at times. Oh. But you know, I I try not to, but sometimes there are some things you can't help, you know? Yeah, yeah, true. I mean, you hear about especially like when people do bad things to kids 
I'm not saying like oh. in any of my readings, but like on the news. And this is why I don't watch TV. Well, one of the reasons. Susan Smith, she needs to burn in hell. And I feel so sorry for the <laughs> kids, you know, because I can picture it in my mind, them kids buckled in that car going under the water and it breaks my heart and it makes me want to cry. Also, when people hurt pets, it, it, yeah. it breaks my heart. Um, you know, and then, I don't know, I can feel some things, other things, I'm... I have a dark sense of humor sometimes. And so like my sister went to the hospital today and she has to have surgery. But to me, it's almost hilarious because she has to, she has to have surgery because she has a boil on her butt. And, and that I don't feel like empathy for her because I can't stop laughing. <laughs> Is it on the tailbone? Well, it's right above her crack in that little hollow spot. <laughs> yep, my daughter. I had a one of those. Thing. Yeah, I had one. I had one of those. They're and not. So they're not I fun to have. But without so, yeah. laughing about it, because it's like. Yeah. And that's what I meant earlier when I was saying, if you keep it inside, it'll fester up like a boil on your butt. Yeah. <laughs> and I know it's got to be painful for her. But definitely <laughs> but it's right in the crack of the situation right yeah. <laughs> but oh, so, yes I do feel things when people tell me what's going on and what they're going through and sometimes it does it literally makes me want to cry or um you know but so yeah the answer is yes I do feel things sometimes <laughs> for people it just sometimes <laughs> It isn't always what they expect. My sister expected me to feel sorry for her. Um, I don't know your name, but it says iPhone. It, you had your hand up to ask a question. Go ahead. I wonder if it's me. No. I star six, so that could have been, it could have unmuted me, maybe. Uh, uh, yours actually posted your phone number in the chat. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Hopefully that doesn't go on YouTube. <laughs> oh my God. Um, no, the <laughs> chat part doesn't go on YouTube. I don't think I will look at it first. If it does, then um, I will cut it out. I'll edit out. Yeah, I'll part. get you. Just text me. I'll send you an editing software. I think it's uh, free still. Yeah, I have iMovie and I can chop it up. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it out. Everybody call Ashley. She likes to talk. <laughs> I'm gonna call you now. <laughs> I know. Awesome. I'm gonna, oh god. I was like all of a sudden like I was like, wait, my phone number's on there and all of a sudden I was like, is that anxiety or paranoia? And I was like, Oh, it's definitely paranoia. <laughs> um okay, everybody be quiet and let's see if iPhone user can if we can hear you. Go ahead. I don't hear anything. I'm sorry. Oh, hi, Mariska. You can, um, if you want to just type in the chat, that's fine. Can you hear us? <clears throat> oh, my throat. Oh, I was going to send you guys that file too. While I'm waiting on Mariska to type her question, I'll go ahead and see if I can send that file. Oh, okay. Let's send a file to everyone from the computer. And this is just a partial because I have not yet completed all of the telescopes. I still have 
Scorpio, Pisces, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius that I have not finished, but here for the, a file with the rest of them. I started to listen to the Libra one, and you were so dead on about what you shared with me. Mm hmm Okay, how come? Oh, because this way we can talk to each other and have more interaction, and I can also record it and post it on YouTube and stuff like that. Capricorn, you liked Capricorn? Libra, I don't think Cancer is going to like theirs too much. But I'm not Cancer, so I haven't got to mine yet. We'll see. I'm glad that it resonated with you guys. Aries, I have not done Aries yet either. Cool. Do you have one of those like auxiliary cords you plug into your speaker or, well, I guess I have to use auxiliary cord because when I bought my truck, they took the original radio out, which was like the Sirius XM and put in this CD player, the basic oh. one. And so it's like, I gotta go spend a thousand dollars to have the original thing to put back. In. But I just went and bought the little $9 cord and I'm fine. That's what my daughter did. So much cheaper and effective. Yeah. Well, now though, I got the new iPhone 11 and the earphone jack is in the charger. So, and I went to Walmart and I bought a thing, you know, to adapt it to the auxiliary cord. But I guess I'm going to have to go on Amazon and get the one that's got like two different things hanging down so I can charge it and do the auxiliary at the same time. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I was, I bought it and I was like, what the hell is this? Where do I put the earphone jack? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do you like the 11? I love it. Um, if you've watched any of the Terrascope videos uh, from like just in the past couple of days or mm -hmm. from before, you'll notice a huge difference in the camera. I mean, it's I've awesome. noticed it. The are so much brighter. It's just beautiful. And the screen, yeah. I had the iPhone 6 Plus before and it had like a gap on the top and on the bottom for like half an inch. So the screen, the display wasn't as big as the actual screen. And on this one, it goes edge to edge. And you know, I'm getting older and got to buy those <laughs> glasses and I need as much screen as I can get. <laughs> Um, I guess if we wanted to do some readings, I can go a little bit over eight o'clock if you guys want to. Because we can that would be amazing. and talk all night. Aw. <laughs> Thank you. But if you guys want to. Oh, Walker's doing really good, um, except for his bunny died night before last, and that kind of upset him but his foot is doing a lot better. He was supposed to get off, uh, take the boot off today, but he um, wore it to school yesterday and he's like, mom, I'm gonna go ahead and finish wearing it for the rest of the week because I don't wanna go to school and wear it one day and then show up the next day and not have it on. People are gonna think I'm weird. So I said, okay, fine, you can wear it the rest of the week. <laughs> Cause I mean, how often does a kid say, oh mom, please let me keep the cast on. <laughs> No kidding. So, but he's doing so much better. He is. I mean, he's sad about his his bunny, but oh, poor sweet. What do you do? And then my daughter's like, "Mom, I can't bury another animal." And <laughs> so, there's hundred bucks. That's a long life. <laughs> it's a long life without any more animals. Ugh. Oh. Well, she, she doesn't want to bury anymore, and she wants to be a veterinarian when she grows up, and now she she was so devastated. It wasn't even her rabbit, but she was so devastated that she works, she volunteers at this shelter, and so she made me call the manager of the shelter and ask what to do because she didn't want to bury him, so now I've got to pay $100, have a rabbit cremated, and oh, how cute. Burn. 
<laughs> but she started doubting herself. She's like, mom, how can I be a veterinarian and put animals down if I can't even handle my own animal passing? I said, Aww. I said, Tay Tay, you, if you're, when you're a vet veterinarian, if you have to put an animal down, you have to realize that it's because they are in pain and you are helping them. I said, it's yeah. totally different. I Absolutely. Said, and because you have such a big heart, you're going to be the ball mass veterinarian because you really care yes. and you do everything in your power to make those animals better. Exactly. So she's a little better now, but she's still like looking at me sideways, you know. <laughs> okay. So do y'all want to ask questions or like do little mini readings or? Yeah, how do you want to lead that? Cause we're on Zoom now. However you want to do, just ask a question or type in a question or, you know, pretty much the same way. Except now you can talk if you want to. You know, I always ask about Jay, so. Yes. <laughs> You okay. knew that was coming. <laughs> okay, Mariska, my ex keeps showing up and I don't think I don't know what my head is coming here. But I have a dream of him. Something's always wrong. Is it the reason why he's showing up in my sleep? Okay, let me ask. I feel like it's because you have a soulmate connection and you're connected on a soul level and you can feel it's like a telepathic link and you can feel when something's wrong a lot of mothers have that with their kids and i think that's kind of what you're experiencing but let me see what the cards are saying i did that with my mother one time i woke up because i heard her yell my name and i think and I called her the next day because it was like three o'clock in the morning in New York. And um, I asked her, I told her about it. And she said at that exact moment, she had gotten really scared because her and her boyfriend were out skiing in New Mexico and he fell and broke his leg. And so you kind of have that psychic connection. But let me see. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. The first thing that came up was high priestess with intuition and feeling subconsciousness. And so you you guys have that like soulmate connection. It's a telepathic connection to each other. Or you can feel when something's wrong. That doesn't necessarily mean you need to call and check on him. You can, but don't say I had a dream about you because he might think that's weird. But um, just say... Hi, I was just calling to check on you, make sure everything's all right, and see how you're doing. You know, you can do it that way. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then don't worry about it. He'll take care of himself. And I'm not meaning to sound rude, but you know what I'm saying. He could be going, and it, and it doesn't have to be a broken leg. He could just be upset about something, but it's so emotional that you're feeling it too okay and jay for lynn you want to see what's going on with jay yeah yeah <laughs> you sound like you're from the east coast um rhode island rhode island okay I, i'm so I, how do i put it i lasted a whole five months in upstate new york <laughs> It, it, oh, was, boy. it was from January to May. I found out what a lake effect was and decided oh. to move back down south. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's quite uh, different here. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of cold. <laughs> oh, well, actually, okay. the weather's been beautiful. You say that when it's 60. When it's 60 yeah. in Texas, I... Well, yeah. Well, it was in that upper 80s today, and I'm wearing a hoodie, so, oh. <laughs> you know, I'm inside. I'm the same way. It's, it's 85 here, and I've got a sweater on. 
it's, oh, wow. it's, it's 72 degrees in my house and I have a hoodie on. I'll put it that way. I oh my God. It's breezy it's here though. <laughs> it's breezy here though at the beach. You know what I mean? Like I'm walking and the ocean's like three blocks on the other side of the building. Mm -hmm. So the breeze Aww. keeps coming in. Where Sorry, are you? Sorry guys, I that one time. No worries. Um, I'm, in I'm in Naples, Florida. So oh, down here in so Southwest beautiful. Florida. Yes, I love it. My daughter. People always ask went, me what I. Oh, go ahead. My daughter was in Boca in school down there, and she moved down up to Gainesville, and they, oh, nice. she doesn't get the good weather like you guys do. I mean, it actually. Gets oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's gorgeous here. People always ask me what I do here, and I say I work remote. So I just picked oh. the most beautiful place to live because I can work anywhere. So oh, I use beautiful. the outdoors all the time. Oh, wow. That's awesome. With Jay, um, I'm not going to say a whole lot because I don't want to put your business out on the street. It's going to take a little while. Um, you guys need to still talk, have heart-to-heart -heart conversations, get to know each other better. Um, it's going to take him a little while, though, to come around. But you guys are soulmates. And you do have chemistry. Yeah, he hasn't uh, connected with me in the last couple of days. So he will. He will. He's got some stuff going on. And like I said, I'm not going to say too much on you because, you know. Oh, I don't mind. Trust me. <laughs> um, right now, it looks like he's somebody else has his, his attention. Is that a good yep. way to say it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you said that was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So, just, you know, he'll call you again. Don't worry. He will. Okay. Okay. And it's cold in Canada. Awesome. Because I get to go to Portland. Isn't that kind of close to Canada? Look, I'm, I'm it's in, I'm, it's I'm in the region. Here in South America. <laughs> <laughs> but Portland in March, I think it's, I'm going to have to buy a coat. Yeah, it'll be raining, I think. I've never, I've always been to the east. I've never, Vail, Colorado is as far west as I've ever been. Vail is gorgeous. I but know. when you're in Portland, if you can get a car and go out to the Columbia Gorge, we'll, we'll probably discuss before then. But yeah, it's oh, beautiful I'm gonna, out there. I, I'm going to drive. I'm going to drive. Awesome. So you can totally go. Yeah. You'll have to go. There's like a tiny town called Hood River. There's literally five men for every woman. They're all like mountain strapping guys. It's the charming wow. like little town yeah, so in the Valley Gorge. We might have to go because it's going to be just us girls. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You'll have to, like the ends are super cheap there and it's all in the Columbia River Valley. And then the gorge, there's this giant waterfall that just pours down off the mountain and you can see Mount Rainier. It's just so, it's so pretty there. Cool. I miss the mountains. I miss Colorado mountains. But Colorado never, is a different kind of cold. It's dry cold. Yeah, it is. And it's, being in the mountains is so cool because it's like this expansiveness that hits your heart. And your heart expands at altitude. It's so cool. It does. But, you know, I was there two years ago, and it smelled so horrible. I can't see. Really? Why? Well, because everybody's walking down the sidewalk smoking weed. I mean, oh, and, yeah. and what people do is their business. I just, I have really bad allergies, and so to smell it. Right, that's I'm, gross. I, I'm one of those people. Sorry. Hello. Oh, you guys Hi, can hear how me. how are you? Yes. Yeah, it's me. Hi. Is it Mariska or which one? Yeah. Yes, Mariska. Oh, yay, we can hear you. We can yeah. hear you. Hi, Hi. Good night, guys. Finally. See if I can rename. I don't know if there's any questions in the chat because I'm walking and not on. But my question, like, just I'll put it out there. I don't know. Is there another question in how to be? Um, no, you can go ahead. Okay, so I want to contact this little medium that's gotten in touch with me to do what we talked about last night. Uh -huh. and she offered to clean the energy for me, but I'm skeptical because I've never talked to her. And I don't know if she can actually do it. Like, I mean, I want to trust that she's offering me, but I've encountered a lot of people in my journey of 
getting into the intuitive realm that will sometimes just tell you that they're going to do something and they're just taking the money from you. And I, I like really, you know, like I want to invest in it. If you're questioning it, then you already know the answer. Mm. Okay. Because yeah, because you, I really, I, I really have to have a connection and, and, you know, feel right about it before you just trust something to somebody. Well, I do kind of trust it. And I think I told you that the very first time she reached out to me, she described the person in detail. Uh -huh. And I was like, well, I don't know anybody like that. And then I made a list. And of course, I left the obvious person that we discussed last night off the list. Mm -hmm. And then under deeper exploration, that happened. And then this morning I get an email and I mean, it was like the email discret and I've never talked to this woman, but she can sense what's going on. Right. So, I mean, I do trust that because I've never talked to her and you're the only other person that's had that discussion with me. So I don't think you're in cahoots with her. So I kind of, I do trust her, but I'm just kind of like, can you really clean somebody's energy field? Can you really do that? Um, Honestly, and this is my own personal opinion, I would not get a cleansing unless I did it in person. And that's why when I tell people that they need a cleansing, I tell them the ingredients so that they can take their own bath. I'm not going to do so you, it remotely yeah. because I, don't, I wouldn't want somebody to do me remotely. I'd rather mm -hmm. drive by the right. and go to New Orleans and have somebody rip me down with a chicken or whatever, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Good to know. So <laughs> do you think that it's better to just jump in the bathtub with the salt and the coffee and do it myself honestly, than having her do it? Because if she's going to do it in person, that's a different story. No, she was going to do it like remotely and like, I don't know, log in or dial in with me. And we were going to like pick time and then I, to me, I know the time and then I wouldn't do it, but that's me. And that's personal opinion. That's not consulting spirit. That's just personal opinion. I wouldn't do it remotely. Okay. Because you know that I really, I want it gone. I well, want it to can, stop. You can do it yourself for free. Right. Or, or I mean, is there something can... specific I need to say to really cleanse it out there? Well, what I tell people and what I do is you put the ingredients in the bathtub with your water uh -huh. and you sit in the bathtub, take your bath as normal and kind of lay there. And I say Psalms 23. God's watching okay. me. He's going to protect me. He's not going to let anything happen to me. Anything that's going on, you know, he can get rid of blah, blah, blah. You know, Psalms 23. Everybody knows Psalms 23. If you don't, Google, right. you know. Um, right. And then... As the water's draining out of the tub, in your mind's eye, you can see all the bad you do. And it's like, envision that the water is a smoky gray or black color, and it's mm -hmm. all going down the drain. So all your bad juju is going down the drain with the water, which means you're leaving. And then when you get out, air dry, except for your hair. I always put my hair in a towel. Um, you can use basic olive oil. I mean, if you, if you don't have any kind of particular oil that you've gone to a botanica and, and purchased, you right, can right. use basic olive oil and just put a cross on your forehead and, you know, and put, set good intentions. Bring me peace, bring me happiness, bring me uh, peacefulness, calmness, you know, put good, right. good vibes. Because when you take something away, like the bad right, you put something in, you re you replace it. You know? Right, and so you like just like the what bad, I replace right it with the good. But you just can like I feel it. I I feel it. Like today, I felt it even more. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I felt it last night after you and I talked. Didn't feel it really through because I was up all night long. And then this afternoon, it was like almost weird. And it was like almost like someone was physically doing something wherever they were remotely. And all of a sudden, I just felt completely zonked. Like my energy was just gone. Like I felt like I felt when I was back in the desert. Well, you and can also I just, pray to St. Michael and ask him to put a bubble of protection around you. And if anybody okay. tries to target you or something like that, then 
send it back to them and, and tell Michael that if anybody tries to target me, please take care of it. And then whatever he does is, is up to him. Because right. you gave him a job to protect you. Absolutely. Yep. And if you feel like an entity or, you know, something like that, you take the path and you tell it to get the fuck off of you. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. Totally have that verbiage down pat. But I just really, like, I was concerned because, like, I literally was sitting there and it was like I went from having energy and having, like, three glasses of coffee and my mom being like, wow, you're talking a mile a minute. And then all of a sudden I was, like, down for the count for, like, two hours. And then I woke up and a glass broke. And I was like, oh, my God, what is going on? Like, this is crazy business, you know? But you can you can remove it. I if if she was offering to do it in person, I would say go for it one hundred percent. If if you felt comfortable. But right. I'm a little. You know, there's a lot of scams out there, and I'm not saying that no. it's a scam. It just makes it sound kind of sketchy to me. I would rather it does do it in person. It does, but like it just like it totally caught me off guard because she like she pegged it one hundred percent, not once, but like she sent me a few messages about it, mm -hmm. and I was like, well, it's like it's I don't know, I think it's like twenty dollars, and I'm like that seems too cheap for someone to hold, you know, energy for you, and I was like, I don't know her, I don't know her energy, I don't know her intention, I don't know if I want to be on payroll, you know, like <laughs> I don't know if I want that. Like, Let me show you something here, um, because the person was described, <clears throat> and, and the person was described with bright green eyes and dark. No, no, no. They were they were described. I went back and looked at it, and I checked out the person. They had a filter on one of their photos. They actually have dark eyes, so dark oh. hair, dark eyes, okay. down to their hips. Literally, and everybody else I know, I was like, well, they have long hair, but it's not down to their hips. This one's down to the hips. And then it specifically said there's bitterness and jealousy, and they're sending, you know, all of this hateful energy towards you, specifically. Okay. I was I like, ugh, that's not what I want. Green eyes. And so, I mean, I've got green eyes and dark hair. You know, no, no, it's actually dark eyes. Dark eyes. Okay. okay. Um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's got to, it's got to be a hundred percent up to you and you have to be a hundred percent sure that that's what you want to do. You have yeah. to be with your feeling on that. I know I keep resisting it. So I appreciate you echoing that, but that's like, that's weighing on my heart because I want it relieved and I feel like, you why know, they're also kind of saying, you, if you don't, don't do you, it, why don't you try to do it yourself first? Yeah. Okay. That would that would be my suggestion. You try doing it yourself first before before putting out, you know, a chunk of money for somebody else to maybe do it. Right. But it just seems like such a low amount of money to do an energy cleaning, you know? How much did you say? Twenty dollars? Twenty dollars. Yeah. And then she even offers like money back guaranteed and then like a three payment plan. And I'm like, that seems really low. I'll, I'll be honest. I, I went and had one done by a home gone in New Orleans. And it was um, probably about, a, it was $120. 100. Yeah, that's about right. I'm sorry. Like to my shaman was about 175 Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was going to say I'm sorry to talk but be careful with those type of i was scammed before where they said okay it's a hundred and um i don't want to lie 120 something dollars to see if you have bad juju on you and i paid the 129 and then it got more and then it got more. right 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 that's Inc exactly what's been ha that's exactly what's been happening it's like every time it's like if you get yeah. something with her and you're like, oh, that's and a great deal. Then all of a sudden yeah. it's like, there's another one. And then there's another exactly. one. And it's like, and I thought I already got, I thought I already got a talisman. Like I thought I already, <laughs> you know, paid they're for the prayers of protection. You, they're going to keep telling you. And then they're going to say, oh, if it doesn't work, you get back all your money. That's bullshit. Sorry to say right, that. Right. 
but yeah well, right. can, I was scammed out of I don't want to lie over two thousand and something dollars. Oh and I no! Kept going and oh, going gosh. until I said, you know what? No, this doesn't make sense. And then they're the, like, like, oh, I'm gonna let this person know that you said this and this and whatever. And if you don't pay the rest money, then they're gonna let everybody. That's to- not good. Exactly. That's not good. Be careful. Yeah, I appreciate you. I appreciate you guys yeah. speaking up. Like, I'm new to all of this. And of course, like, you know, my best friend's mom is like, I have a medium now. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. I have somebody else to talk to about it. And she was like, do you like your psychic? And I was like, yeah, I do. I was like, we talk like now, you know, on the weekly. I really, I appreciate her. I appreciate you, Lena. And so, you know, like it's, you know, it helps to have somebody who's woke kind of helping you along. But the last thing you want to do is like go hook up with somebody. And the next thing you know, you know, you're in the dream for... Your life. Yeah. Don't don't do it. Don't. No. Uh, my advice. No. Would be thank no, you, ladies. Because I've thank been you, ladies. Out of that before, and I've never since I've been speaking to Lena, and they haven't said, "Okay, do this," or it, it, it's never gotten to to any. Okay, you have to do this, then you have to do this, then you have to do this, then you have to do this. It's always a step yeah. by step. Yeah, just yeah. Just, I really appreciate the holistic viewpoint of we're going to take care of the whole thing, and this is the root. And I feel like that's yeah. Lena. That's what you do. Get, I think you, that's really what you do. And you get sucked into them because you want to believe so bad that they're going to help you, and not everybody's out there for you. No, I know. I, that's kind of. I was yeah, like, I do. I do sales, and I I hook up the same systems for people. And now I say this the people that I'm helping hook up these systems, actually they lead them through a process that mm. you know that they're step by step by step. And so it's not intended to just take money from somebody. But I was like, I, I've seen a few of the emails and kind of clicked on them. And I'm like, these are so gimmicky. I was like, yep. you know, it's like all of your life is going to change. Otherwise doom and gloom is upon you on the 2nd of October. And I was like, yeah, I mean, God's got me. I don't think, I mean, the sky's not turning red yet. I mean, <laughs> I'm like, I'm okay. <laughs> So. Have you seen the sunset in Texas? It's red every night. <laughs> oh, Austin sunset. Where, where are you in Austin? Or are you, where are you at? Galveston? I'm, I'm right? Galveston. Galveston. So you're like my neighbor right across the Gulf of Mexico. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We just have to buy a boat and, and dodge the hurricane. <laughs> well, or, you know, dodge the cartel out in the oh. middle of the Gulf. <laughs> That's the other thing. Yeah. So, well, thank you, ladies. I really appreciate you giving me stern wisdom. Thank you. Yeah, do it in person or do it yourself. Because you can go, I mean, all it is is three tablespoons of baking soda, three tablespoons of sea salt, three tablespoons of, um, what do you call it, Epsom salt, and a cup of coffee. A, a cup right. of black coffee that you could just go make up a cup of black coffee. You know, not the coffee grounds, but the actual coffee, and pour that all right. in the bath water. And, and yeah, you, and I did that before. Put olive oil, make a cross, put olive oil on your forehead afterwards. You've probably got all that stuff in the kitchen, and it won't cost you anything. No, I have all of it, one hundred percent, right now, and I even have sage to sage myself afterwards. So. I think the thing is that you're scared to do it yourself. You think you might mess up. That's why. Yeah, I have thought that before that, like, I'm just going to mess it up, you know, or if I was, if I was good at doing it in the first place, it never would have found its way in. That's always kind of my feeling. And it's like having a buddy there with you. It's like, okay, somebody's got my back. They're going to help me. But think of it this way, Ashley. Nobody wants it gone more than you do. So you have exactly power than anybody else that could do it for you because you want it gone more than anybody else wants it gone. Exactly. Well, and I don't even fully understand. I don't understand if it's like forces are acting right through this person or if they're sending things to act on me or if they're actively doing it. I don't even understand any of it. Like that's, those are not my powers. Like I'm clear audience. I know that I have to, you know, use, special crystals to tune into that skill and I can listen and learn and like I'm very intuitive like that but like this is like a total like I, I just own these are not my strengths 
but like somebody could be like, Oh, you have this black smog over the head that you can't even see. And I'm like, I didn't know that. <laughs> you know, I'm oblivious. Yeah, you can feel, you can feel when something's not right. And I can, and you're in sales. So you talk very well. So just talk to Michael and say, Hey, Michael, look, I need you to watch my back and protect me. Yeah. Or, Michael, use your sword to cut away the bad juju. And he'll do it. Right. And you, you know how to talk. So you have all the skills you need. Right. Absolutely. Why does he keep messaging me? I think they're knocking on the door. One second. Do we have anybody else on the live stream who has a question? Thank you. What did you say? Do we have anybody else who has another question or? I have a question. Oh, okay. I'm okay. someone else to speak to. <laughs> okay. So I want to know. Say, for example, the, like the, the stuff that I told you before where my ex is concerned. Uh-huh. How do I, I want to, how do I break that soulmate kind of intuition? Because it's kind of parent, like, I don't know if it's like, it, maybe it's in me that I want him to come back, but technically I don't really want him to come back because um. I move on with my life it's been over a year now but i kind of feel like I, I it's time for me to get on and get get over the fact that i'm not going to go back there you but can, you can do a cut and clear and basically what it is is you um you light a candle but you make two lists and you make a list of everything that you don't like about this person. And then you make a list of what you are looking for in your perfect person. And you're going over the list and you say your prayer and you, you're, you're saying, get rid of this, get rid of this. And you burn it over that candle and let the candle burn completely out. And when you take the wax and everything along with the ashes and you throw it in like the ocean or running water, a stream or a lake, something like that. I can flush it down the toilet? You can flush it down the toilet <laughs> because you want to get rid of him. You, and, and, a, and when you flush, the water flows and it flows away from you. And then you keep your list that of um, everything you want in your perfect person. Mm -hmm. And then you take those qualities, not looks, don't put looks, because looks really doesn't, a soul doesn't have looks, it's just a soul. And you're looking mm -hmm. for a person for your soul, right? And so you want them to be kind, you want them to be loving to children, you want them to like puppies, or yeah. like, you know, things like that. And then you say, okay, well, if I want him to be adventurous, then I need to be adventurous. I want him to be kind, then I need to be kind. I want him to like puppies, so I'm going to go to the shelter and play with the puppies, you know, if you don't want one of them. Mm -hmm. You know, think, but you start instilling those qualities in yourself because life attracts life. You've done sent him away. You don't think about him anymore. He's gone. You know, and it's a cut and clear. You, you, you burned his ass and you flushed him down the toilet. He's gone. And then you... you close that door and you leave that door closed and you start working on bring because you just like what you the, with the bath and putting on anointing oil afterwards you want to replace something that you took away so you mm -hmm. get rid of him and you want to bring in your perfect person well i spoke to tanya before and she's telling me that he's coming back into my life and i'm like okay and he and he may try but it's ultimately up to you. You're the one that has control over yourself. So he may try to come back, but you don't have to let him. 
But is he coming back? What I forget to ask her, was he coming back with good intention? Did he learn a lesson from what the things that he did? What is it that, why is he, why is, why he would want to come back? That's why I'm wondering, why am I having dreams of him? It's not like I'm going to bed thinking of him. You understand? It's just that I'll be sleeping and then I'm like, oh my gosh. And I, I have to wake up out of my sleep. I literally wake myself up out of my sleep because I'm like, oh gosh, could I dream about something else? Or I start thinking about something else and then I try to fall back to sleep. Mm-hmm. The thing I knew that like when he's sick or anything is about to happen to him, I was, I, w- I went back to the caribbean for vacation and he was he he actually injured himself and for th- seven nights straight i kept dreaming of him and i'm like mom i told my mom i'm like mommy i'm he's always on my mind something's wrong something's wrong i don't know why but he was trying to call me but my phone wasn't on and he ended up in the hospital he had an injury at work that took him out to work for a whole, almost a month uh-huh. And I'm like, no, it's happening again where I'm keep dreaming of him. And I'm like, something's wrong. Something's off. But why am I dreaming of him? Like, what is it that he's out there now? He probably, he don't have nowhere to go. So he want to come back, but he's ashamed to come back because of the things that he put me through and, and he feared that I wouldn't take him back or what is it? I have that something's off. Um. We need to really let, since it was Tanya's reading, we really need to let her do that. No, she didn't, she, I just asked her in, in is, general. Uh-huh. No, this but, is a long time But I mean, ago. as far as would it, whether it would be good intentions or not, we need to let her finish that. Um, but you can still, if you want him gone, you can do the cut and clear. And then when he tries to come back, just don't acknowledge him. Because ultimately, it's up to you whether you let him come back or not. He can try, but that doesn't mean you have to let him. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's up to me at the end of the day, as you said, right? I make the decisions for my life. So he can try to call you. He can text you or whatever. He he never reached out since. Uh I've never reached out. I saw like an unknown number call me and I wouldn't answer unknown numbers anyways. My number haven't changed. The last time I tried calling him, this was months ago in February and his number was disconnected. Okay. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's up to you. I mean, he might try. I don't know. I, I, I don't want to look because somebody else already looked and I don't want to like butt in on, in on their thing. No, no, no. She, she did. She did that. It's just like I asked because I wanted to, is, it wasn't like a general, it was like a general, like, just like we're having a conversation now. Uh-huh. It was just like a general open. And I, I just, oh, okay. I, I felt a question and she was going on to the next. She just told me X, Y, Z, this, that, Tara, whatever, whatever. And then she just left it as there. It wasn't a general reading. I feel like like, if he does come back, it'll be because he has an agenda. So just be prepared. But you need to make a decision first of whether you want him to be in your life or not. That way you can be prepared when and if he does come back. Because right now, all I'm doing right now is focusing on me. I growth. My, um, my, like, before, I want to ask you as well, like, I used to have bad anxiety when I was with him I just developed them I don't know what I never I wasn't scared of anything and then I started going into a deep depression I should I I didn't know it was depression like Uh I would want to come out of my house I wouldn't want to come out of bed I would lock myself in the closet and I would be in the dark and I would just keep crying constantly and I don't know why or what caused that because I wasn't like that like I lost my good job because of that so i wanted you to look into my question would have been what caused that and if i would ever overcome it i think it feels like you got lost like when he came into your life it was more about him than it was about you and you lost your sense of who you were yeah that's how i felt 
I know something like that. That's, that's, that's exactly how I describe it when I go to therapy. Like I lost my, my sense of being. I lost my connection within myself. Like when I look in the mirror, I don't recognize who I am. Right. Like it's that, like you were, you were living for him and you forgot who you were. Yes. Would I ever, cause right now I'm still reaching to the point where I'm, I'm I, I forget about what, what he did to me. I wouldn't put no one through that. You know what I mean? I wouldn't even wish that on my enemy, but is it weird that I, I, I say I forgive him, not for him, but for myself? No, as long as you're doing it for yourself. Because you know that in your heart, you, have, you, you should forgive him. That does not mean that what he did was okay. No. And, and it does not mean that he can do it again. But you forgive him, you move past it, you put it in the past, you close the door, and it's gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that does not mean you have to continue with abuse. It just means that you forgave him so that you could let go of that. Dark that hurt shadow. That that's, that's just like what we were discussing. That's part of your, your shadow. And if you held on to that anger and that hurt, all it's going to do is fester up. And so, yes, you, it's good that you forgive him so you can let it go. Wow. So I, I just I just I just wanted that peace of mind because it sent me to therapy. It sent me into a like I just started getting back on my feet, start um doing what I'm supposed to do, start loving myself again. Like I can see myself in the mirror and remember who I was, remember myself, you know. I see myself now. I see the beauty within myself. That's very good. But still, I want, I, it's like, it's hard to explain it, but it's easier. Like, it's in my head that I want to say it out, but I have an accent, as you, you, you're you aware of. I'm not from America. I'm, I'm living in Canada. And I have a deep, deep accent. And when I start talk, it comes out, and I'm scared that people wouldn't understand when I speak. <laughs> Because when I, it sounds like you're from the islands. Yes, I'm from the islands. Okay. Yeah. So anytime I speak, it comes out deeper and deeper because I get so, I I, I try to tone it down so that people could understand when I'm speaking. Oh no, I understand I think you're what you're speaking saying very well. I was oh. mar- I was <laughs> married for a long time, and then when I got divorced, it's like I would go to the Walmart and hurry up to get back home because that's what I had been doing for so long that I yeah. didn't know who I was anymore. I didn't know that it was okay to go to the store and walk around and look, you know, or, or, you know, go down to Taco Bell and get myself something that I wanted. I didn't know any of that was okay because I had lost myself. So I completely understand where you're coming from. And it, and it does take, it's a process, but you're on a good path to getting to where you need to be. Do you see anything that I need to work on other, other than, I'm, I, I know I'm working on a lot of stuff right now, but is there anything else that I need to work on? They're saying um, that you, to say thank you to yourself, like appreciate yourself. Wow. Does that, I don't know what it means. Do you know what that means? Yeah, I, I get it. They're, I'm they're very, saying tell tell yourself thank you. Yeah, like I'm being very I, I'm very harsh on myself because of the things that I went through. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't I don't take time to appreciate me. Like I give out to others. Like I, I'm in the medical field and I'm always helping everybody, but nobody knows that sometimes I come home at the end of the day and I would cry and I would feel emotional. I'll feel so emotionally drained like I don't put self my like I don't take time for myself yeah you need to do that you need to decompress and you need to be nice to yourself 
So come home and take a hot bath and just relax. And that's a way of just being nice to yourself. But it's simple. I mean, you don't have to like go buy yourself roses unless you want to. <laughs> you know, you can no, you can go I, buy yourself a dozen roses, come home and 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 pull all the petals off and throw them in the bathtub. <laughs> you know. I normally mm -hmm. I would that but i would i would normally buy myself a glass like a, a nice wine and when i'm home i just have a glass of wine and watch tv or yeah, or 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 um, eat ice cream and watch netflix just do something nice for yourself and then tell yourself thank you you know that was really cool we should do this more often yeah i will but yeah but i've um gone over by a long time yeah oh my so gosh um, does anybody else have any like last second question or I do okay I want to know what is anything you could tell me about my love life because it seems like I'm at a crossroad right now okay let me see let me do the regular ones Did something just happen? Like, like you're a reader, right? I'm a what? Are you a reader? No. Okay. I was thinking that you were a reader. Um, they're showing like some, some okay. Did you just go through a breakup? Yes. Okay, because I'm showing that. He's coming back. That, that, oh. that person is coming back, and it shows that you are going to be happy and be lovers. It's still going to be burdensome, though. But it's like he's coming back with love this time. And I guess I'm kind of like the last person that just spoke. Is it with good intentions? Um, it looks like it is because it shows a lot of love. There will be, you know, it won't always be rosy. Because but that's why. It does show the Ten of Wands, which can be a burden or... Or, you know, and it might, it might be a feeling that I'm getting is that the burden is with yourself because in the back of your mind, you're constantly always wondering, is he going to do this again? I don't, I don't know what the situation was, but it, but it's like the burden is, you don't know if you can trust or not. But it does show lovers and it shows that um, Eight of Wands, which is like Cupid's arrows coming in. So there's a lot of love coming with him. But I think that it's, I really feel like it's you questioning constantly. What's, what's his motive? Is he going to do this again? Is he going to hurt me? I don't want to get hurt. And you're going to have to pray about it. And 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 decide if you want him to come back or not. And if you do, you're gonna have to let the past go. And you're gonna have to have a clean slate because it does show him coming back with love, but you have in doubts. You make it sound like almost like it's gonna happen pretty quickly. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. It, 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 it is. I would expect it this month during October. I mean, it's going to happen fast. And but you Our anniversary to, is actually this month. You need to decide whether you want him to come back. And if you do, you're going to have to wipe the slate clean and let it go, whatever happened. But how do you do that? I, I, I don't know how to do that. You're going to have to realize that whatever happened is in the past and it's not not... It doesn't determine what will happen in the future. I don't I don't know if he cheated or what the trust issue is here, but he's coming back with love in his heart. And you're gonna have to not worry about whether he's going to do it again. You're gonna have to have faith and just trust. And it's not easy because once trust is broken, it's hard as hell to re repair it. 
Right. But that's what I'm saying. You're going to have to pray about it and really, you know what I mean? Really yes. do some soul searching because he's going to come back. And you're you're gonna be the one that's the one that's gonna be like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Is this a situation where he's just gonna pop up, or will I know in advance? Well, it shows him riding right back in. <laughs> um, I mean, and I guess the reason I'm asking is he doesn't know where I'm at, but I'm closer to him than what he thinks. It's just him coming right back to you. It really does. I mean, he may, I mean, the cards don't have a phone on them. So, you know. <laughs> right. I don't know if he's going to call or text, but I know he's coming back and it's going to be soon. It's, he's coming okay. right back. Okay. I, so you better get to praying. <laughs> <laughs> I've already been praying, but I'll pray a little harder. Yeah, just ask for clarity and, and, and make sure, like I said, that if you decide to let him come back, you need to be able to do it with a clean slate and have faith and trust. Okay. I don't I don't see him coming back starting shit, you know. <laughs> and I did not see another woman in the picture either. Okay. Yeah, we have like over 31 years of history, so I don't know. Okay. Yeah. He'll be back, but yeah, you're going to have to let whatever happened go. Okay. Because if not, okay. it, it'll wreck it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Lynn, did you have any other questions? Nope. Okay. Well, then we're going to go ahead and sign off, and I will see you guys back. I like this platform. I really like this one. I like being able to talk back and forth. Um, so we'll come back here next Tuesday. Sound good to everyone? And I sent that file. Did you all get that file with the links to the uh, monthly Terrascope? Yep, okay. I did. Awesome. Okay, I will talk to you guys soon. Love you bunches. Bye-bye.